Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the loveless son. Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn how to live a life that is pleasing to him. People loved not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables that Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. And people loved these parables that he told. Jesus used parables as a way of helping listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. Last week, we learned about a son who asked his father for his inheritance while his father was healthy and still alive. That was a shameful request. We were surprised to learn that the father divided his estate between his two sons. What an unusual man. And not long after that, the son ran off with his inheritance and soon spent all that he had. Eventually, he became so desperate for food that he decided to return home to his father and to beg for mercy. And to his surprise... His father had been looking for him, and when his father saw his son, he ran to embrace him and kissed him, and he welcomed him home. To remove the shame that his son felt, the father ordered his son to be given a robe, a ring, and sandals. Then the father threw a big public party to welcome his son home, to restore his dignity before the people of the town. During the party, the father said, My son was dead and is alive again. He is lost, and now he is found. And they began to celebrate. Luke chapter 15, verse 24. As the party went on, the father noticed that the older son was not present. So he left the party to look for his son. And soon we discover that the older son had no intentions of coming to the party whatsoever. Jesus continued the story by saying, Now the older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, so he called one of his servants and asked, What do these things mean? Luke chapter 15, verse 25 and 26. The servant said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. Luke chapter 15, verse 27. Now, the older brother was not at all pleased to receive this news. In fact, he was angry, and he refused to join the celebration. About then, the father came out into the fields looking for his elder son to bring him into the party. But the son said, Look, these many years I've served you. I've never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a single young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed and you fattened the calf for him. Luke chapter 15, verse 29 and 30. Now, the dad did not try to defend the younger son. Instead, he lovingly said to the older brother, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this your brother who is dead is now alive. He was lost, and now he is found. Luke chapter 15, verse 31 and 32. In another unexpected twist to the end of a parable, the son rejects his father's love and refuses to accept that his brother has been forgiven. And so in this parable, it turns out that the lost son in this story is not the younger son, but the older son. The younger son confessed his sin, and he was restored. But the older son continued to remain distant from the father and refused to accept the father's love. The truth is, the older son never really loved his father 
or his brother. His own words give him away. He refers to the younger one as that worthless son of the father, not as his blood brother. He claimed to have never disobeyed his father. Do you believe that? He thinks of himself as righteous and not as a sinner. He accuses his father of never giving him anything, yet he has already received the firstborn right to the double portion of his father's inheritance. He admits that he wants to celebrate with his friends without his father being present. By his own words, he tells us how much he dislikes his father. This is what Jesus wants us to understand about the attitude of the older son. And as we come to the conclusion of this parable, it's important to remember why Jesus told this parable in the first place. Luke begins the section of his gospel, this section of his gospel, by saying, now tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Luke chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. As Jesus told the story, he was not hoping that the religious leaders would find themselves in the lost sheep, the lost coin, or the lost son. Jesus wanted the religious leaders to see that their actions and attitudes towards God were exactly the same as the older son's attitude towards his father. They were unloving and not concerned about sinners who were being drawn to God by the loving message that Jesus preached. This is Jesus' powerful reply to the complaints of the religious leaders. Now, God is always drawing sinners to a celebration of restoration from the effects of sin, but religious people usually are unwilling to attend the party. Jesus concluded by saying, it was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this brother was dead, he is alive, he was lost, and is found. Luke chapter 15, verse 32. Today an invitation is being extended to you to experience the same love that the younger son experienced. As we look at the parables of the sheep, the coin, and the son, it is powerful to see how God goes after lost ones. The lost sheep was one out of a hundred. The lost coin was one out of ten. The lost son was one out of two. Out of the many people who are listening today, God is ready to find you and to restore you. He wants to do for you what he was willing to do for both of the sons in this story. He wants to give you a robe, a ring, and sandals. He also wants to say to you, all that is mine is yours. And son or daughter, you are always welcome to be with me. That is exactly what Jesus wants to do for all of his followers. Speaking about his disciples, Jesus said in John chapter 17 and verse 8, I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and they have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. God the Father sent Jesus to give us all that Father God wants for us to receive. He wants you to be forgiven and experience intimacy with him. We can have a close relationship with God. In the end, the two sons in this story were present at the cross when Jesus was crucified. The thief on the cross who turned to Jesus and said, remember me when you come into paradise, is the younger son. And the religious leaders who said, crucify him. And then he saved others, but he cannot save himself, is the older son who would not accept the Father's love. That same choice is being presented to you today. 
which son would you like to be identified with? Do you wish for Father God to give you a robe of righteousness, a ring of provision, and shoes of protection? Or do you want to stay away from the party of salvation that the Lord is ready to throw for you? Allow Father God to embrace you with his arms and forgive you for all the sins that you have committed. Say with me, thank you, God, for sending Jesus to die for me and my place on the cross. I accept that Jesus paid for my sins so I can be forgiven and spend all of eternity in your presence. Now, Father God, for those who just prayed with me, send your Holy Spirit to fill each one with your presence and power. Now, before I leave, somebody who's dead has a dad who's not at all like the dad in this story. He was mean. He said hurtful things to you. He even hit you and caused you to be injured. I invite you to place your father into the hands of God. He knows what to do with your dad. He knows why your dad did what he did. Give your dad to God. Forgive him. God will forgive you and wash away all the hurts in your life. You received a touch from God. Or ask Jesus to forgive you. Write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Now Jesus said, It is right to be glad when sinners who are lost find their way back to God. I celebrate with you the decision you have just made to follow Jesus. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.